Hello and welcome to Maths on the Red Carpet, a special series of podcasts from plus.maths.org. I'm Rachel Thomas. And I'm Marianne Freiberger. Here we are at our last day in Helsinki, Finland, before returning back to the UK after the opening of the International Congress of Mathematicians 2022. And today's podcast is going to feature the work of June Ha and one of the Fields Medal winners this year. We were lucky enough to speak to June in the run-up to the Congress. Uh, Marianne, what did you think about June Ha's work? Well, his work is very interesting. It combines two very different areas of mathematics, as he will explain to us, geometry and combinatorics. But it's the way he talks about his work that I found really, really lovely, because it's very intuitive and quite poetic. And actually, he did have an interest in poetry at high school, and he came to mathematics a little bit late, as he'll tell us. So he just has a very beautiful way of talking about things. And he did say in the video that was recorded of him for his award of the Fields Medal that... When he was young, mathematics seemed to him like a faraway land with very high walls that he couldn't hope to penetrate or climb. But obviously that's changed very much because he's now a winner of a Fields Medal. But also when you listen to him talk, you get a sense of how doing mathematics can give you this feeling of serenity and quietness, which is something that I think many mathematicians can relate to. So let's hear from June now. Um, can you tell us a bit about how you came to be a mathematician? Yeah, I mean, biologically speaking, I I've, uh, became a mathematician at a relatively late age. So I became like a full-time math person, like in my mid-20s, maybe. Um, but that, that was just an accident. Uh, in a sense, I was never properly exposed to the real mathematics, I would say. And, and, but once I was exposed, it, I was quite hooked into it. So about the time that I was about to graduate my college, there was a math course uh, taught by this uh, famous mathematician, Hiroaka Heiske. It was uh, supposedly introduction to algebraic geometry. Um, I knew nothing about algebraic geometry, but I read his uh, autobiography, his, and he's an interesting person, so I enrolled in the course, and fortunately for me, it was not at all an introduction to algebraic geometry, because I would have not understood it, no matter what the content was, but it was mostly about what was going on in his mind at that time. So he would lecture about the progress he made like yesterday. So it was almost a real time thing. And this was a completely different experience. This was the first time I actually saw someone doing mathematics. This was my first exposure to mathematics as a human activity. One of the areas you work in is combinatorics, which put simply is about counting things. So very basic combinatorics would ask questions like, in how many ways can you order a pack of cards? Though obviously the questions get much more sophisticated as you delve deeper into the field. Can you tell us what drew you to combinatorics? Well, uh, combinatorics is a study of finite and discrete objects. And... There, there's very obvious appeal to it. Uh, a lot of the areas in modern day mathematics, it is very well developed to the extent that in order to understand some of the central questions in that area, you have to invest several years of your prime days like, to even to get that point. So it's like uh, studying the kind of astronomy that you can only do only once you have like a billion dollar telescope. Otherwise, there is no, not even a question or a starting point. But combinatorics is the extreme opposite of that. All the objects are so small in a sense compared to the infinity. Um, and they are very tangible at the same time. You can 
almost see them and touch them. And they are all, in a sense, visible to naked eye, like without very sophisticated training. And I didn't have a sophisticated training. So this was the, the part of mathematics that was visible to my eye. So there was a... What, what were some of the first um, parts of combinatorics that you encountered that caught your interest? So it's uh, part of what's known as discrete geometry. So I was drawn to some of the questions they ask in the study of hyperplane arrangement. So when, when you're talking about hyperplanes in a Euclidean space, so you're thinking of like a normal space that we'd think of yeah, of, of yeah. higher dimension. Well, yeah. And a hyperplane is something that can uh, kind of divide up that space. So are you talking about um, trying to figure out what arrangements of hyperplanes, how they sort of slice a space up and how the space is con are still connected? Yes, yes. And yeah, if you have a slightly more sophisticated background, you can ask, about the topology of the complement. And this very quickly leads to deepest questions. So when you're talking about the complement of the hyperplanes, you mean the space not occupied by the hyperplanes. And when you talk about the topology of that space, you mean the general shape of the space, whether it's made of one piece, whether it has any holes in it and so on. Another area you work in is algebraic geometry. This involves describing geometric shapes by equations. People might remember from school that lines and circles can be described by equations, for example. What do you find interesting about that area? So, I mean, when algebraic geometers are asked questions of this kind, there is like a canonical answer and a sort of obvious answer to many people's mind. Algebra is its one thing, and the geometry is a completely different thing. And to put it in one word, that makes you think. And this uh, connection is quite amazing. And it can, this story can be told for hours and hours and even years and years. That's a fascinating story. But for me, it was a little bit different. Um, the, the reason why I was attracted to algebraic geometry was somewhat similar to the reason I was attracted to combinatorics in the first place. Um, of course, geometry, I think this is a axiom or it's common to all the human beings. So geometry is intrinsically interesting because we are mostly visible creatures. Like vision is our primary sense organ and we understand the world around us in terms of geometry as opposed to sounds or taste or smell or any other sense compared to vision they are almost nothing to us at least as a species but the geometry at the same time is very hard to formalize it contains a vast amount of information especially when you compare it to the complexity of our language and logic, which is mostly finite and discrete. But the kind of spaces that you think about in algebraic geometry, you don't have this difficulty somehow for an amazing reason. The algebraic geometry studies spaces that called algebraic varieties, and these are the solution sets of systems of polynomial equations. So in order to specify a space, all you have to do is to write down an equation. And this is not a complicated equation. It's a polynomial equation with finitely many terms. So you only see finitely many numbers and finitely many variables. And you can just write down in your notepad and look at it. It's something you can touch. Um, so in a sense, these are the only kind of spaces that I could really put my hands on, at least in the beginning. So that and, was the appeal to me of the algebraic geometry. And your work, part of your work's been in a way bringing those two areas together, 
combinatorics and algebraic geometry. Were you surprised by that connection or what helped you make that connection between those two areas? I mean, of course, it's always, always surprising and it never fails to amaze you when you find the so-called unexpected connections between two different areas or when you could answer a question in one area using the techniques of the other area, but we shouldn't be really surprised by it. Um, perhaps we should be pleased by such a connection, but it's, it's just by no means surprising. It shouldn't be surprising because this subdivision of the areas or subdivision of or human intuitions on discrete things, continuous things, geometric things, analytic things, and so on. These are just uh, presumably just an accident, but just a result of uh, like a millions of years of ex our experience as a species and the kind of sense organs that we have and the kind of experience that we had that just made up these uh, artificial division or classification of human intuition and human logic. If we were some different kind of creature with different types of sense organs with in a different environment, we presumably have developed completely different areas of mathematics. But some of the questions that we ask in mathematics, I cannot say for sure, but uh, it almost feels like the questions themselves sometimes transcends these artificial divisions. So it's by no means surprising that some of the deepest questions forces us to go over these uh, fictional boundaries. Okay? But it is, it is at the same time very pleasant. It, uh, letting alone just uh, this fictional nature of the supposed boundary, it, just shows you who we are and how we think. It, it just reveals the necessary prejudices we have accumulated over the years, maybe millions of years. And what has the experience been like um, to you know, discover you've been awarded this prize? And what, what is, what's the experience been like for you? Well, I mean, as I said, it's, Interesting, it's a certainly an unusual event um, in one's life. Um, yeah, you, 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 you become more self-conscious, I think, which is uh, simultaneously a good thing and a bad thing. So for example, we wouldn't be having this conversation if not for this prize and I would have uh, never met you and we were not talking to each other right now. And it, this sort of connections forces you to be more self-conscious in the sense that you, you, it makes you to interpret and understand who you are and what you do in a broader context. Right? What are you doing? Why are you doing? And things like that. I suppose that's a good thing. Um, yeah, but at the same time, in general, being more self-conscious, I think, is a bad thing. I, mean, <laughs> I try to resist the temptation. I mean, you, we always, I mean, every one of us always build up a story about us, which is almost completely fictional mm. and horribly crude. <laughs> and this is like a winning a Fields Medal. It's like a good episode in this story. I mean... I think we should always resist the temptation. Well, that's it from Fields Medalist June Ha. Huh? Uh, you can find out more about his work by visiting plus.maths.org. Thanks for listening and bye bye for now. Bye. bye.